Today we have two men that Jesus introduces us to. We have Lazarus and a rich man. One is named and the other is nameless. One is economically poor and the other rich. One is rich in faith and the other poor in spirit. One is covered in sores and the other in fine linen. One eats the leftovers that fall from the table that others have been eating on, and the other has a full stomach. But both die. Yet angels carry Lazarus away to be with Abraham, and the rich man is buried and sent to Hades, a place of fire and torment. For Lazarus, he receives, re receives reprieve from his earthly suffering, and is in the care of Abraham. And it's this beautiful image of him being wrapped in Abraham's arms, finally receiving physical contact after being probably pushed away because of the sores on his body. Lazarus does not gloat to the rich man for his good fortune to be with Abraham. The wealth of heaven does not change his character. But the rich man, he finds himself in a fiery torment and in desperate need of water. But he is denied water. He's denied being joined with Lazarus and Abraham. And he is denied warning his families to follow the law of Moses so that they don't end up like him. Jesus gives us a distinct dichotomy between the lives that these two men lived and the afterlives they are given. So, is the rich man being punished just because he has the privilege of wealth? Is this parable really about being rich or poor? Jesus lived during a time where prosperity was a true mark of faithfulness. The common idea that, he, that the rich man must have done something good to be blessed by God with wealth. And that the poor man must be suffering, he must have done something wrong. Therefore, the followers of Jesus or the Pharisees who are hearing the story view the rich man in a favorable light because of his economic standing. He must be blessed by God. But as we read in the Gospel today, Jesus does not deem wealth as an indicator that someone will be given entrance into the kingdom of God. Wealth and prosperity are not markers for Jesus for faithfulness, but of responsibility and accountability. The saying, much is given, much is expected, is true. But in the case of this rich man, it is not so much about him giving Lazarus money or making him wealthy. It is about looking out at that man at his gate, looking down on the floor and looking up at Lazarus, seeing a human being, a child of God. The rich man fails at this over and over again. He never acknowledges Lazarus' presence or cares for him on earth. But his dogs have better sense than he does. To ease his pain, they lick his sores and try to aid him more than their master. It reminds me of a story in the news recently of a girl caught in a house fire uh, and her dog laid on top of her and saved her life. Unfortunately, the dog passed away. The dogs care for Lazarus in the same way, attempting to save him from his discomfort like the man does not acknowledge. In the afterlife, the rich man also requests that not Abraham, but Lazarus give him water. He's still demanding and still acting as though Lazarus is a servant. He still sees him beneath him, though Lazarus is being rewarded with heaven. He does not see him as an equal or a human being, and it makes it difficult for him to understand why he is there in heaven and not the rich man. How the wealth and privilege of his earthly life does not transfer to his afterlife. The rich man is blinded by his focus on the differences that separate him from Lazarus, socially and economically, instead of their similarities, of what they share as people, God's people. 
And the rich man does not want to see these similarities because between him and Lazarus, because then that would mean having to admit that they were on equal footing, and he would lose his authority. He would also have to acknowledge and face a part of himself that he might not want to face. This parable is very challenging. No matter what, you have two men experiencing suffering. But I find it also challenging because it forces us to think about the ways in which we are that rich man sometimes. The rich man is nameless because we could be him. My name could be there. I am challenged to think what it is what, about what it is that I am blind to see in this world and about myself. What are we blind to see in our lives? What differences are we focusing on instead of our similarities? What is it that we don't want to put into focus about ourselves? I surprisingly feel for that rich man because how easy is it for all of us to get caught up in our own lives and the stresses of families. When sometimes we do, sorry, and when sometimes it's hard to relate or take the time to see what is going on around us. Along with our personal struggles and what we are living with at home, sometimes hard to see what is going on around us. We live in a world and especially a country where there are strong racial tensions, where there are divides between the public and law enforcement, where there are mass shootings and shopping malls, where there is just so much sadness. It is difficult to process and make sense of the struggles we have as a community to endure. And it's easy to want to look away from the TV and the newspaper when we just see so much hurt. There is just maybe too much to see sometimes. So it's not only that there are things in life that are hard to focus on, but most importantly, it's maybe the people that help us see. Like the rich man who had Lazarus, we have one another and have Christ. We are here on this earth for one another to love God and love our neighbor. Yale Muslim chaplain Omar Bajwa posted this week that to cherish the people who enlighten your path to God, for they are his secret blessing to you. Who is the Lazarus in your life? Who is opening your eyes to see your neighbor, yourself, and the world? Who is a reminder to you of God's love in the world? Back in July, there was a story posted of a college student who was walking home one night, and she was trying to catch the bus. And she comes across this homeless man who asks for some change. And she quickly says, of course, I have some, like, let me check. And so she goes in her bag, and she notices she can't find her bus pass. And the homeless man recognizes this, and he asks her, how much money is the bus pass? And I have four dollars. I, I can give it to you. The girl was so taken back by his generosity and that someone who was also in need giving her something was just so much to bear. She found her bus pass and she gave him four dollars, but she didn't want to leave that moment with him without a memento. So they took a picture together, for she wanted, she said to him, I asked if I could take a picture with him to tell everyone about the size of his heart. So when they are about to take this picture, he walks toward her and he checks his appearance, and they take this picture together and they say goodnight. But as she's walking down the road, she hears him yell, mention in that picture that my name is Caesar. Caesar. Lazarus, our names, we can be the ones in the world who are with our eyes and our hearts open to see the beauty and the needs of others around us. Let us be Lazarus. Let us be Caesar. Amen.